Today's gospel invites us to reflect on our intentions. Prayer, fasting and almsgiving, traditional Jewish and later Christian works of mercy are all recommended by the Lord. That recommendation is somewhat qualified, however, because as the gospel goes on to point out, effectively, it's easy to go wrong with them if we approach these works with the wrong intentions. Take prayer first. We define it as the raising of the heart and the mind to God. Prayer helps us turn towards God. We're communicating with God. And when we're communicating with God, then we turn away from ourselves and from the things that distract us from God. Fundamentally, prayer is about focusing on God. However, if when we pray, our intention is just to impress others, perhaps with the length of time we spend at prayer, then not only will we fail to benefit from our prayers, but in all likelihood, we won't really be praying at all. We'll just be pretending to pray, pretending to attend to God. A similar case can be made for fasting, which is there to help us discipline ourselves. Once again, though, if we're focused on how impressed other people may be by our works of fasting, then we won't benefit from them, and strictly speaking, we won't actually be fasting. We'll just be foregoing food, which is good in itself, I suppose, but nevertheless is still some distance from the religious discipline of fasting. Likewise, almsgiving, properly understood, it forces us to recognize the poor as just as important as ourselves and just as worthy of our attention and that of others. However, once again, if we just want others to notice how generous we are, then something has gone wrong. We'll be some distance from the true meaning of almsgiving. Now, at one level, we could say the solution to this is just to have the right intention. Perform works of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, we might say, but do so with the right intention. And whilst that's certainly true, whilst we should have the right intention, it's only part of the picture. The misplaced intention the gospel warns us against point to a deeper problem for human beings, namely the sin of pride. It's pride that makes us think we can turn prayer, fasting and almsgiving to our own advantage. And it's pride that makes us think God won't realize what's going on. The essence of pride is to turn away from God and towards some creaturely good. That's what makes pride the most serious of sin, and it's exactly what the gospel is warning against. Moreover, pride never ends there. Once we've turned away from God, every other type of sin is liable to follow, leading the sinner into an ever worse mess of his or her own making. But what then is the remedy? Well, in a sense, it's Lent. Here in Lent, we try to give God first place in our lives, and we have the next 40 days or so to give it a bash. Do we really love God above all other things? And will we try to keep that focus in the rest of our lives? That's really what we're asking ourselves during this Lenten period. Doing so, of course, requires that we reject the sin of pride. We have to be humble. We have to recognize the need for God in our lives and not seek to place ourselves above God. Nor will any of this attack or impinge on our human autonomy. Ultimately, only in God will we find true and fulfilling happiness. And in order to see this, in order to experience this, we have to let go of our pride. Goodness knows there are no shortage of examples of foolish pride. 
as we approach this Lent, let us not make that same mistake ourselves.